Happy Wednesday, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Everybody ready for a little day trading this morning? Good to see you all on this lovely May 22nd. Good to see you, Lewis. Good to see you, Mike. Andrea, good to see you. Brent, good to see you. Casey, look at everyone. Beautiful. Good morning, everybody. Beautiful, beautiful day here in New York. Hopefully, everyone's having some great weather where you are. Finally, it looks like summer has arrived. And not too far from Memorial Day. Memorial Day right around the corner, everybody. So um, I expect it to be an exciting next two days. And then uh, I think it's going to die on Friday. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Where is New York? Uh, somewhere in the, uh, in the East Coast. Somewhere uh, dissonant. That's, you know, a small little place, Ken. I think you lived here once before, if I was correctly. <laughs> All right. So uh, a lot going on uh, this morning. There's been a lot of stocks, uh, you know, not as great so far as a pre-market as I liked as of yesterday. But uh, we did have a couple of stocks just want to talk about, first of all. Uh, but before we get started, everybody, just keep in mind that uh, to, uh, we did Traders Talk uh, yesterday. So hopefully everybody, um, you know, enjoy that. We always do that on a Tuesday. And then we have uh, the a phase one lesson three or four that's going on for today and then uh and then at 12 o'clock we are going to be doing a open house so make sure you tell your friends to be there we always like to do that in the middle of the day and then once again don't forget about the, the wonderful memorial day that is on monday so like i'm going to repeat again it's going to probably be extremely slow if it's gorgeous here uh in new york i know everyone's going to be taking off here on wall street doesn't mean you still can't make money. I mean, honestly, I think some of the most profitable days are days on those because sometimes companies have to come out with news and sometimes the advanced traders are not around, so they just let things go. Uh, you don't get too many shakes on it. But so don't, uh, unless you really got plans to do something on Friday, definitely stick around for it. All right, now let's go through the watch list and see what happened. There were a couple of stocks that did move yesterday. You know, hold on. ARRY was one of them. Uh, this one I thought was probably the best one out of them all. Uh, in a way, you could see it how it came out right at a gate. We're from twenty dollars, and then it's about less than I don't know thirty, about an hour. It ran to about twenty-five. Great little, nice little shake there around twenty-two. Did a little shake there, then popped again. Array just breaking all-time highs. Nice little stock right there. And we had the BC RX, which also was pretty nice. And then all of a sudden, got a nice little short. Uh, was not hard to borrow too, so that was another pretty nice little stock right there too. Gap down huge right there. You could see it how it was at seven, went all the way down to four, and then uh, just obviously just fell out of bed. I don't think that's coming back anytime soon. Remember what I was telling you though. Well, pharmaceutical stocks, I say it all the time, they don't come back. Okay, you don't realize how serious it is when a company loses a drug. If this is all they're investing in, it destroys them. A couple of stocks also spinning, spilling into this morning, and one of them is going to go back on my watch list is the WKHS. Now, that stock had a nice little move yesterday. Uh, some of you remember we didn't trade too long ago. This is a stock went from a dollar to $3 in one day. It was up about, I don't know, two 300%. And uh, Workhorse looks like she's moving again. Got a nice little Fausto flag picking up right there, right now in the pre-market. Getting uh, nice at that buck ninety. Great orders out there on the level three. Look on the right, just everywhere. Nice little move there. So that one's going to uh, go back on the watch list. ARWR, that's another one. ARWR, that was a great pop early this morning. I thought that one alone was probably the big winner for the day. <laughs> just that one on pre-market, we were pretty much done on that one. The ARWR, that thing was just amazing. But... um. But as we're going on for this morning, there are a couple of stocks that are moving. Uh, Debfine says, uh, tough will launch his product with UK large home improvement and chain. We'll definitely take a look at that. It was, uh, it was looking good from Grant on the WKHS. Well, like I told you, that's going back on the watch list. Looks pretty strong, uh, Grant. And, um, you know, and, and remember, everybody, one share. I mean, sometimes, you know, you're looking at things, you're looking at things, you feel like you're going to chasing it. Remember, Chasing is not always a bad thing because, you know, yesterday, you know, when I had that great short in that stock, I chased it, you know, 50 cents later. Just trade less shares. You don't got to trade a lot. Remember, you're not here trying to kill it. Um, Dean, we're going to check out. Hey, that's on uh, the the uh, targets also going to be on my watch list. And, and one of them I actually have a very soft spot for 
is uh, Nordstrom. I was telling my wife this morning, it's our favorite store. And I said, oh, what's going on Nordstrom's? They're not doing too well. They haven't been shopping there lately, honey. She says, no, why? I said, stock is getting crushed. But we're going to check that one out in a little bit. So let's get our uh, pen and paper ready. Let's start working down that list. WLRX. Now, some of these stocks I found really early this morning. And uh, some of them kind of died out a little bit. But uh, the, 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 VR, the VLRX right here, you have the pretty nicely from 380. You could see it was a $25 stock. Stock's been getting destroyed. It's one of the only days she's been up in a while. So looks like she's coming back and might be testing these support levels right around the five. Well, it looks like it did test it, actually, right around there. If it breaks it, you know, look for the stock to get around the $6, $7 price range. But stock's making a nice little comeback. Uh, so definitely keep on. I just thought I'm not crazy about the pre-market because it really looks like, you know, that, that's a pretty significant drop from $5.60 to, to $5. It doesn't look like it's really getting... Um, Having, it's holding here strong, so probably need to wait and see the open, what happens. CO, um, CODX is another one that showed up on the watch list. Stock's up 600,000 600, shares already trade up 26%. Another stock that's gapping up, a little cheapy. You know, you know, not not a crazy uh, stock right here, but some of you, once again, remember the stock. We traded it back here. The stock had that nice gap up, went from $2 over to 360 and then came right back down. We know she's got those really great short. That obviously, when I see that, I know it's right away. It's definitely got to be a short squeeze. Ninety-nine percent short of short squeeze. But we traded that. Look back on your journals and see how you traded it. Uh, T O C A. The stock's down twenty-seven um, percent. Looks like it's getting to the support levels right here. It looked like it hit it there yesterday in uh, pre-market and bounced right back up. So if it holds here, looks pretty good. Only thing got to be careful. Volume is uh, tier size is very very low, and uh, not a lot of orders out there. So that's something that is a red flag. Always remember that. Listen, guys, very important. You know when we do phase one, okay? Phase one is so critical to your trading. You know, I, I had a conversation just the other uh, over the weekend. Some guy, you know, somebody was telling me. He says, you know, why do so many traders fail? I said, why did they all fail? There's so. He says, because you know what? I have to admit, he said, I was a failure. I said, because you guys go out there and you kill it. Try to focus on a day's pay, okay? Well, what is a day's pay? You know, they don't, you guys, some people don't realize it, that if you come from a $100,000 a year salary, and I told you and I came back and said, hey, would you like a secondary job that only works about an hour a day and I give you a 50% raise, would you take it? Everybody's like, of course I would. That's not a stupid question. That's a stupid question. I'm going to get a stupid answer. Then they're like, try to make 200 a day. In trading, 20 cents. That's all you got to make on a 1,000 shares. But the other aspect I'm trying to get to is that phase one is so critical that sometimes when you look at some of these big movers, somebody keeps forgetting when we talk about the three L's, you know, I um, mean the three T's, tradable, trend, and trap. If it's not tradable, you can't trade it. You know, it's part of the most important rule. Everybody thinks they could trade something. Doesn't mean you should because you can't. It's got to be in the first T. So hopefully you guys have been really taking advantage of that first T in the tradable rule. And a lot of these stocks, when you hear me talking about in pre-market, I mean, we're just here trying to bang them out pretty quick. But when, when we spend that time in, the, in those phase one class, that beginner kindergarten class, trust me, it's not kindergarten for some of us when you don't even know what a tradable stock is. And remember, that alone is about half the failure rate. So anyway, I just want to kind of throw that in there. Target. Everybody's talking about the target move. Target's getting taking a little bit of a hit. You know, I mean, it's up a little bit. Uh, you know, listen, a lot of a lot of the older retailers, the brick and mortars, came, uh, are coming out. You know, like I said, Nordstrom's came out today, taking a big hit. But some of them, uh, what, what was the other one we saw yesterday? Uh, Kohl's got crushed. So you know, it, it's it's weird because you think one will spin off the other, but it looks like they're all running on their own uh, on their own news. So it's not more of an industry mover. So Target's doing pretty well. That's pretty that's pretty good. I would always expect Target does well. DSTG, actually, it's probably the old. Remember, what, remember, I was telling you about yesterday about about Coles. I mean, I'm a Target fan, so I would always go to Target instead. Uh, what was the other one that I had here? Oops, spelled this one wrong. DSTG, that's the one. What am I doing? Why is it not thumping? Oh, that's why. My uh, keyboard is not cooperating. Yes. EG. There we go. All right, so this one's taken a very big hit down, about 20%, 200,000 shares. 
light on the tier sizes, but um, it looks like it's testing support levels right here. Kind of bounced it from from yesterday. You can see it went around around sixteen dollars. You can see there's some nice orders out there. That one looks pretty good. You can see it here on the long term chart, pretty much testing there too. Your storage. Don't know what that. Uh, never shopped there, but doesn't mean I won't trade it. <laughs> Nordstrom's here it is. So Nordstrom's took a huge hit. Now I was going back on the time frame on this stock, and I was looking at it, this stock was a seventy dollars stock. I went back all the way to two thousand and nine. I mean, there's definitely support levels. I mean, you could see it. I mean, about here in 2009, there's support levels. but And we are testing some support levels right around here. So, listen, Nordstrom's, I mean, look at that. That thing just dropped and never really came back. I mean, that is a pretty nasty stock. Listen, I got a soft spot for Nordstrom's. My wife loves it. Doesn't mean that I, I wouldn't consider shorting it, <laughs> you know. So, anyway, um, sometimes even the best, you know, the brand name stores out there are also taking a hit. So that one, we'll keep an eye on it. What else we got? W, big list here today, by the way. So we got the WKHS. You already know about that one. You could see it's starting to build a little bit of Fausto flag. Just checking it. We just saw it at buck 90. Started going up a little bit. SE is another one that's gapped up too, up 17%. Very light on the tier size on level three though, but is breaking all-time highs, 52-week highs. Nice little stock right there. And then the AXP is another one. We'll keep an eye on that one too. That one showed on oh, no, us one one. EXP. Scratch that. I don't know where that one came from. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Um, A V um, A V P. That's what I meant by. My left hand my left hand uh, kind of like messed up my writing there. This one up about one point two million shares in volume, up sixteen percent. Great volume everywhere. Look at thirty two thousand share buyer. That is what we call AK. Iceberg orders. So that's what we're looking for. Yep, Mark, that was the one. All right, guys, so pretty decent list here. Typically normal. Ken's already up 20 cents on VLRX. All right, way to go, Ken. Always nice to start the morning that way. Give him a round of applause. Um, so anyway, so there's our list. Pretty big, decent list uh, going into uh, this uh, Wednesday. But remember... It's perfectly normal. This is hump day. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are like this. So let's keep, we'll be careful on Friday. So uh, don't forget, guys, a very, very busy day today with a lot of stuff going on. You got phase three, phase one, lesson three and four. We got uh, open house today, live trading with Fausto. Um, so we're going to introduce everybody to the trading community. And then uh, markets close on Monday and then uh, next week. We got another presentation with Investor Inspiration. All right, guys. Good luck today. Happy trading. We'll see you back. Not, if you're not in class, we'll see you back at 2.30. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading.